another foreign operation. Why I just got too used to going to supermarkets and living the good life in the United States and decided that my overseas adventures were going to needed to come to a halt. And so how long was the project in uh, Minnesota? Uh, I imagine that was uh, a little over a year, year and a half probably. And did you guys ever get to the point where you could lift the generator? Oh, we, we, we only ended up not, not that much. The, the, I don't know if the con what happened to the, the original contract, but we got some very flyable balloons, and I got some pictures of the help, little 47 uh, towing a big balloon. And uh, yeah, we could. The only problem was that uh, if you use a balloon style balloon or a balloon shaped balloon, like you see most of them are, you know, spherical type things, at about 30 miles an hour, the front end caves in and they become a, a kite and they go up higher than the helicopter, so you, you can't control them. So uh, they're not, if you had to fly against a headwind, why they, they wouldn't be real practical because you had to go so slow to keep them from uh, turn, dishing in and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and trying to go up through your rotor system. So uh, we ended up then converted to a, a, a dirigible type system. And that became very complicated because <clears throat> the lifting gas is only in the upper third part of the dirigible and the rest of it is just inflated to make the shape. And you have to have uh, uh, constant uh, uh, blowers going to keep it inflated and, and what have you. But we got the system working and it was, it was kind of complex, but uh, we could tow it good and, and, uh, and uh, uh, it worked quite well. But uh, uh, we never got it to the out to the field. Uh, I quit the company for one thing in the meantime, or decided I wasn't going to go overseas. And uh, I think the project just died a natural. I think we were too late to really get the job done. They probably put put it in by road by that time. So, uh, but it was inter interesting concept. Sure. I didn't know he was doing all these dangerous things. In fact, I just found out. <laughs> You, you were well aware that we burned up balloons when we brought you a charred nylon to make. <laughs> well, I'm sure, but <laughs> things didn't bother me then. If I could get a free uniform. <laughs> now you you hadn't done any nursing then yeah. during this time frame. Uh, she started she started working as a nurse, uh, uh, a part time in a doctor's office. So after after I come when we come when I. Right, right, so we back overseas. When I got back from over, when we got back from overseas, yeah. You didn't do any nursing overseas. No, no. no. Mm -mm. Okay, so back to Minnesota. She she did approach a, a, a doctor there. Uh, wanted to uh, hire me to go on a cross country motor trip with them because over there they usually took a mechanic with them when they drove a car cross country, uh, and uh, of course I wasn't available. But Barbara talked to him about working in a hospital over there, and he highly discouraged her. He says, it's uh, uh, a table, tabletop surgery or something like that. He says, that, he says uh, you, wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't go for it. But that wasn't what it was, but it was really cute what, what he said about the <coughs> hospitals there. He, he, I think that was what I needed. And then, what it came next? Well, then... Uh, uh, I, w I started working for, uh, there was some of the money people in Minneapolis uh, uh, bought a helicopter and uh, just having another helicopter in the area, you know, I, I learned, communicated with them a little bit, see what's going on and, and uh, what have you. <clears throat> well, they hired me then, then to manage that uh, operation and there their thoughts at that time was to use uh, as uh, public transportation in the inner city. And uh, we built a heliport on top of Dayton's department store and uh, one at KSTP television station and, and uh, various things like that. <clears throat> but it didn't turn out uh, profitable for them. And uh, uh, I became aware of other contracts at that time and I, uh, I left them and I uh, uh, bid on a contract for uh, Metropolitan Mosquito Control, which is a six-county mosquito eradication uh, uh, thing for the Minnesota area. 
And uh, I didn't have a helicopter. I didn't have uh, any money, very much money. I, I remember uh, uh, using the house as collateral to, uh, uh, as a, to buy a, a bond to bid on the contract and uh, was awarded the contract. <clears throat> then I had to go find somebody with a helicopter to partner with uh, to perform the contract. And uh, that's how I got in the helicopter business. Is this, uh, it didn't take us long, it was just a matter of, uh, we started with one uh, helicopter that I did some maintenance on in South Dakota, and he uh, partnered up with me to start out. And uh, within, Three years, we had six very operational helicopters going. And those are all 47s? All 47s, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was good. And uh, uh, then because of various things, why, reasons why uh, 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 I left, sold out to the, my partners and uh, uh, went to work uh, and uh, uh, helped form Omni 5 Helicopters in Janesville. Wisconsin. So what in Janesville, um, before that, did you, and you were working during this period, Mom? No, too much. She, Jenny was born in 63, right. and... Uh, so that I, would have been 57, <coughs> well, no, 58, 59 to 63. Okay. Uh, um, in uh, 58 and 59... That's when you are doing the mosquito stuff? No, before that I was doing the... Uh, Okay, yeah, the mosquito stuff and, and the people that uh, were trying to do this passenger thing. Right. <clears throat> uh, then my first job was, uh, after that, I, I took a job uh, with a company fly, flying uh, forest fire suppression work out in, uh, in uh, the Badlands of South Dakota, uh, government, for, federal government contract. And so uh, Ginny was just about walking age, and then we uh, uh, would have been in 60 years before you were born. So I, I flew that contract, and uh, uh, then the people that owned the company that I w was working for, uh, they were not in good financial state, so they ended up getting a head, headhunter that really got me, me involved in owning it, owning partial and, and operating the company. So that started in 1965 when you were born. We used to go down to Chaseville and you in your little car seat and your mother would put you up on the Hotel Monterey counter and have the boy watch you. I, uh, well, she did something or another and terrified him something first. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, that's... <clears throat> anyway, that's when... Uh, so it, Going to Janesville happened when, what year? It would be in 1963, the year you were born. 65? 65, pardon me, yeah. Jenny was born in 63. Right. Okay. And then what was the impetus for OmniFlight? What, what was the need for helicopters in Janesville? Okay. The, the, uh, uh, it, it was a long story about how it came about, but basically... Uh, the president of Parker Penn Company uh, owned a helicopter, and he was doing power line patrol, uh, power line work with it, and it was uh, uh, a non, it was not a profitable situation, so he tried to join with another helicopter company from Michigan called Orchard Helicopters, and it was a the whole thing was a kind of a financial disaster. They had uh, a lot of debt and no income and, and uh, uh, what have you. So basically, uh, I was brought in to, uh, to shape the whole thing up. And uh, if uh, I got the thing operational and, and uh, could take Mr. Parker's name of, off of all the paperwork, well, you got half the company. So for no investment except just proper running it. Uh, in the meantime, <clears throat> there was one other thing that happened is that uh, I, uh, when I was flying the Forest Service contract out east, <clears throat> in, in, in uh, Lakeland Helicopters back in Minnesota, 
uh, we were in a training pro uh, training business, and we trained several pilots. And one of the pilots was Don Bradburn from from. Uh, and when I was flying the Forest Service contract out east, uh, out west, he was also he was flying rides at Mount Rushmore, which uh, I started too. And uh, we got we got to uh, uh, talking anyway. We decided to go in helicopter business together. So we bought a helicopter in San Diego, and before we got it back to Minnesota, I. Uh, this Janesville operation came along, and, and we decided to go with that. So uh, it was a business that just needed uh, good management. So uh, we started that, and that turned out uh, uh, pretty good. We went uh, uh, to where we were uh, looking at. Uh, I just gave a friend of mine uh, an old business card from that. We had an operation in. <clears throat> in uh, Janesville, in Lexington, Kentucky, Corpus Christi, Texas, uh, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, Teterboro, New York. Uh, so and those were all connected with the same company? Yeah, all on the flight. And was that, was the origin of it, Janesville? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So everything else was just branched out as yeah, opportunities they, 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 arose? They were, yeah, just as opportunities arose. <clears throat> in, uh, I read an article recently that uh, uh, Bill Huckopter put me in for an award and they had done some research on my background and it indicated that uh, uh, at that time we were operating 30 some turbine helicopters in uh, I think 17 different locations uh, throughout the country. Uh, we were flying passengers, uh, first class passengers from uh, uh, 60 Street Heliport downtown New York to JFK for Pan American and, uh, and that was in the 222 yeah mm -hmm. can, can you tell them your <coughs> reaction to almost running into Jesus <laughs> well, that was yeah back that was way back in the day that do you remember going spraying down Missouri with me and how well, we put out toilet paper and then you'd check the Distribution of the spray. I remember doing that. Okay. I don't know if that was in Missouri. Well, you were just about yay high when I, I was spraying in Missouri, and we go from ranch to ranch and what have you, and uh, you would be on the ground while I did the spraying, and I'd go to work for the next rancher, and you would ride in the helicopter over someplace, <clears throat> and you usually fell asleep just about the time I <laughs> got off got off the ground, <clears throat> but um, anyway, way. We were spring in, I was spring in northern uh, part of, um, or southern part of uh, Missouri, and uh, <clears throat> my next job was uh, uh, in northern part of Arkansas, uh, near Eureka Springs, and uh, uh, the weather was bad, and I really was kind of grounded, and then finally the fog kind of lifted, and there was kind of rain showers and fog, and, and so I kind of was sneaking over there by a treetop level. I was, you know, kind of keeping a compass heading and figuring I would hit something that I would I would recognize. And all of a sudden there was this big statue of Jesus right in the bubble in front of me. <laughs> and it was where they have the, the, the passion play in Eureka Springs. And it's the original passion play. They have, it's an amphitheater that's a natural and this huge big statue of Jesus. I, I come right I come across this top of his no, mountain right nose to nose to him. <laughs> Uh, was kind of worried and wonder if I was really had crashed and died or just what just what happened. Uh, but oh, you know, lots of interesting things. There's uh, lots of parts of Missouri and Arkansas when it work, uh, and you wouldn't remember, but they were just out of the, uh, like cartoons of the Lou Labner uh, things of you know guys with long rifles, uh, squirrel guns. And, and beards and, and uh, 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 the little towns that had just uh, 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 wooden planks for walkways and uh, muddy and stuff like that. It was just a, it was a different, different, different place. So, so anyway, I, I, uh, uh, everything went well. I uh, went to work uh, from, went, went from Janesville as we were becoming uh, more of an international, we were starting to look at uh, jobs for the New York 
for the uh, World Health Organization and make trips over to Africa to uh, uh, bid on jobs uh, for a um, uh, project that they were on. And so I got to see a good bit of Africa and uh, <clears throat> uh, the backwoods, naturally, and uh, uh, so on and so forth. But uh, about 1980, uh, they moved me to Washington, D.C., and uh, uh, so I'd be more uh, at the center of things. And that's about the time I got misdiagnosed by the Riverside Clinic in Janesville and really put an end to my aviation career at 50 years old. I had to, had to quit working. So. so now you were aviation, but I remember, Mom, you have your pilot's license. Mm -hmm. When did you get that? <clears throat> In, uh, okay, this would have been about 19, uh, uh, 57, 58. So it had been the period where you guys came back to Minnesota, yeah, I think. Yeah, it was, it was after, it was, it was between when we first started Lakeline Helicopters. And I remember, because I remember you always saying that uh, mom was flying when she was pregnant, so. Yeah, that, that's, your mom has probably never forgiven me for that, but <laughs> uh, she's, uh, she was, uh, flying Bonanza, on, uh, doing commercial work, and she was flying some newsprint down to Rochester and uh, in the Bonanza. And she was telling me that, you know, that to have the seat far forward enough to where she could reach the rudder pedals with her feet, that her belly was out so far that she couldn't get the, the yoke back to floor the airplane properly to land. <laughs> and, Hold on a second. Hey, guys. Can you turn it down a little bit? You're coming through on the video. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes. Where's the food? Where's the food? Yeah. The leftover food? Yeah. It's in the fridge. Yeah. Sure. Just eat your portion, not grandma's. Go ahead. So, so made, yeah, that made flying a challenge, I presume. Yeah, and we had various little uh, uh, things like that. I, I, uh, uh, she. She was you know, doing quite well. She she was the bookkeeper for the airport, and uh, and consequently took her wages out in the flight time mostly. And uh, she got a commercial and uh, twin engine rating. And uh, uh, I had no control whatsoever. I bought a Comanche at a sheriff's auction, and uh, had no idea what kind of mechanical condition it was in. I ferried it over to this guy that did my work and, and had to inspect it and get it licensed. Anyway, I was out working out of state someplace at the time and uh, your mom wanted to fly it and I says that it was, you know, I was, there was a lot of people got killed in those airplanes because they were the first kind of high performance uh, <coughs> private aircraft that were around. And I kind of was discouraged her greatly that uh, not to do it, but she did it anyway. She just got checked out. <laughs> so I had no, no influence whatsoever. So and weren't you the eighth woman in Minnesota or something? Something that, like that. That got her pilot's license? Uh-huh. So that's pretty neat. Yeah, it was, and it got written up in the papers, and it was famous for a while. <laughs> Okay, so then back to the D.C. area, and then after that ended, I recall we all moved back to the farm? Or? Right, yeah, we, went, we, we ended up back to the farm. You were in school at McDonough. Right. And uh, uh, but the fact you got your first car out there. Uh, we had the, the blue Verizon. Okay, that was yours. That was... Uh, that was... The, was the, now the orange one didn't precede it. Hey guys, please. Uh, I, we had we had a suburban, mm -hmm. and uh, out there you were you were just just starting to drive, and, and uh, 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 we bought a uh, uh, a Plymouth Horizon, whatever that small compact was at that time. Uh, and you drove it back to Wisconsin. Your mom drove the uh, suburban. But that was the blue one. The blue one. Yeah. The blue one we got because then I eventually got another one. Those are so nice. 
I got an orange one. <coughs> what was that little car I had that the whole front opened to get into? That was an Isetta. Isetta. <laughs> I loved it. When was that? Uh, that was right after, uh, about the time I finished working on that balloon project in Minneapolis. Uh, it was had a little motorcycle engine in it. It would uh, go down the road and 50 miles an hour with a tailwind. And uh, it used to bother me a little bit uh, driving it. It'd be a big gravel truck or a dump truck come up behind you and you're looking at every mirror. You were actually looking under the dump truck. <laughs> looking at what? Looking under, under the truck that would be following you. So pretty, pretty low to the ground. Yeah. I liked it though. And then when we were out east, how did, did you, it sounded like you liked that area a lot. Oh, I liked it out there. He was in this thing with New York and, and so I was there by myself a lot and I just wandered around and saw And then you started working at the hospital there. You were know, right there across the street for a little while, I remember. Mm -hmm. She, she well, took a refresher course. Yeah, I had to take a refresher course because it had been quite a while since I'd been in nursing and I didn't practice very long after. So I worked as a nurse, I'm thinking 22 years, and I wasn't a youngster when I started. But uh, it was a good experience. I So was that the first time back? Working when you were out in... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. It had been a long time since I'd done any nursing. I never really practiced very much as a nurse. So that's why I took the refresher course uh, in out east. Uh, and uh, that prepared me for working, but I was an occupational health nurse, so I wasn't working in the hospital. I was out giving shots, and uh, I'd have to come in and do drug screens, and. Um, uh, alcohol, uh, blood alcohols, uh, you know, draw the blood for them. I didn't right. do the, the lab work. And so, you know, I practiced nursing very, very short time right after nursing school. But uh, I, think, I think it was like 22 years I was in uh, occupational health. And I really enjoyed that. That was, that was pretty much after we moved back to Wisconsin. Uh, yeah. To so that was, you did hearing conservation, infection control, that kind of stuff? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason I went, you know, took a refresher course is he, he got sick out, you know, this wrong drug thing, and he was, you know, just no shape at all. Uh, and it was a good experience for me. And we came back to the farm. Mm hmm And didn't we build a, an arena for me to ride in? <laughs> yeah. We, was we, that it? We, that was all before we went out. Oh, out, yeah. Out. You know, with that big building and the farm was yeah. for me, for riding. Yeah. After I wasn't working anymore, why, we didn't spend a lot of money on much, much of anything for a while. Uh, I, I, um, I, enjoyed my horses all the time. I, I bought and sold horses for a while and I bought them for 6000 and sold them for 6000 I didn't make any money, <laughs> but I, I had fun buying and selling. Good. And then, how we stayed, you guys stayed on the farm till? Okay, well, then after uh, uh, I got, uh, Eventually, uh, uh, I went to uh, uh, to uh, uh, Rochester to uh, the Mayo Clinic and uh, got straightened out. And so, by that time, I you know, my, it took me six months after getting off drugs where I come back to some kind of normal health. Uh, but uh, my kind of, I started doing some freelance work after a while, they got me flying again, and and, uh, and uh, I flew for other people somewhat after that, but uh, that was, that being misdiagnosed pretty much ended my 
commercial flying. And, uh, uh, but thankful I got what I got when I got it, so I'm not, not uh, upset about anything. And I can remember us on the farm. I, what you summer was it when you put up so many bales of hay? What was that? What summer was it? Oh, uh, that would have been in about. Uh, we got to the farm in '72. Yeah, '72, and uh, uh, it wasn't too long after that. I can remember that uh, you telling your grandma Scott that uh, how hard you guys worked that summer. You put up. Uh, a thousand bales of hay, and I corrected you. I said, "How about five thousand bales?" Of hay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was before the big balers. Yeah, that's the 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 greatest labor sa uh, saving device that ever agriculture has developed. Really? Yeah. The big bale, I guess the throw baler didn't really work it because you had to unstack them. You still had to take them out and stack yeah, them. That was a long period that they had the regular bales. Yeah, oh, so it was, yeah. 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 Not heavy work, though. Character building. It was. Muscle building, and too. Remember, yeah. Jenny learned to, learned to drive that old pickup we had out on the farm? Mm -hmm. She, yeah. <laughs> I, I was able to drive that, too. That was fun. And I was telling the kids about that, that you know, we were able to drive before we had our license because we could do it on the farm. Mm -hmm. And that's why Aiden wants to have acreage so he can drive a car around the yard. The, uh, I, I've been tempted at times to ask your kids if they're going to get a motorcycle and they, you got your first motorcycle. <laughs> I just, I, I, so yeah, that would have been about 73 or 4, I would think. Yeah, you got, uh, it was pretty quick after we got the farm. You, I, but, uh, uh, 175 Honda at an auction someplace. Well, that wasn't even the first. The mini bike was the first. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the mini bike. Yeah. The mini bike was probably around for a year or two yeah. before we got the motorcycle. Did Did you have to have any kind of a license for a motorcycle? Never left the farm. No. Never left for the, the motorcycle. Yeah, in either case. Yeah, he had a, I didn't remember this. I bought a helicopter that the guy carried this mini bike with him, a mini thing with him as transportation. Uh, ground transportation and uh, <clears throat> it Bill got got that to play with. It was just a little bitty thing. It was, it was and it was kind of my first introduction to mechanical stuff because you know why would I want to fix something that I didn't want to run mm -hmm. like a tractor or something like that but a, a mini bike I always wanted that to run so I don't think I did much with it but I can remember maybe taking off the glass bulb for the fuel or something to see if because I remember you had done that one so started the incentive to have things work, so that was neat. Yeah, it wasn't, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, you were kind of stuck on the farm, so you had, but you had your toys, so you, right, yeah. I, I rode rode the motorcycle too, I think. Oh, I'm sure, it was kind of the utility vehicle for the. I just did it for the fun of it. Do you remember, do you remember the, uh, the Honda motorcycle that I bought? You had a 350. A 350, mm -hmm. and I put you on the on the the front to get you know in front of me on the seat, and we'd drive around, and then we'd come by the house, and I'd get off and let you drive by yourself, but you'd have to come back. <laughs> God couldn't touch the ground. <laughs> couldn't touch the ground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, was, he he had to catch you, huh? Right. So I had to keep it going. I couldn't fall, or else I was in big trouble. So I had to keep it nice and straight. And go that, route. <laughs> was, that was a partnership thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, the farm was fun. I really enjoyed that. And I would agree that it built lots of character. Yeah. That's really but you fun. never liked horses. Um, yeah. You had a horse, didn't you? Cindy. Cindy. Right. Now, I can remember being in the fair and where we were doing showmanship and the ringmaster and the judge, I got confused and I would have been in the blues at least it would have started in the blues had I figured out that they were telling me to go forward for that at the county fair. That was I, I was a little upset over that. <laughs> one of those disappointments. So, yeah. Lots of wonderful experiences. But then you guys got the place in Tennessee when? What year was uh, that? 
in 2009, we started coming down here and uh, I was flying uh, for the Department of Natural Resources on deer counts. And, right. And, you know, being out in the cold and the snow and everything. And when I got done with that one year, we still had about three foot of snow in, in Janesville on the ground. And I told Barb, I said, let's just go and get in the car and go to run out of the snow. <laughs> yeah, so we did. But, and uh, having flown all over this area quite a bit, why I, uh, somewhat, not quite a bit, I wanted to go to Chattanooga because I, Chattanooga because I, I thought it was so pretty from the air. And uh, that would have been uh, 2009, about 2005, something like uh, uh, 2006, maybe. And uh, then we rented down here for a